Hey everyone, Dan Mickle here, and thank you for joining this week's Focus Friday, brought to you by Soul Performance Academy. You can check them out on soulperformanceacademy.com and across all their social media at 717soul. And of course, you can reach out to me across all social media at Real Dan Mickle. This week on Focus Friday, we are going to look at the law of the vital few, or anyone who's taken an economic class. 80-20 rule. And basically what that states is that 80% of our results come from 20% of our effort. And I think in the training and coaching and educational world, we tend to forget about this. We get so fixated on the things that aren't going well or the skills or the areas that we're struggling with that we take vital time away from them in practice, in scrimmages even, um, to work on the lower side of the skills or the things that are deficient and we ignore the things that have gotten us where we're going or the efficient skills. So for example, let's say that you are a volleyball team that is very good at serving, but you're struggling at passing. Typically what happens is we will spend the next couple practices or the time that we're together really hammering on passing and getting better at passing, trying to get better at passing. And we neglect the skill like serving that we are extremely good at. And what will happen is what we are good at will start to tick down a little bit. And it's not going to bail us out like it used to because we haven't been focusing and we haven't been putting the time on it because we are con so concerned with the areas that we're deficient in. It's common sense, right? We feel that we're bad at something. We need to work at it to get better. And that is the case. But the problem is we put too much time and effort trying to fix those things that are deficient. And we neglect the things that we're good at that got us where we're at that make us efficient. You know, there's the old saying, you know, the ride the horse that got you to the race. And we tend to lose track of that. We tend to think that, well, if we really clean up the stuff that we're not good at, that's going to help us out with larger gains. And that's not always fact. Now, obviously, we still need and want to train on the things that we aren't the best at. That's how we raise the bar as a whole. But we can't always do it at the cost of not continuing to work on the things that we are really good at. And again, this isn't a psychological thing where we're talking about, you know, having everything as a happy and a great mindset. This is actually about the training process that we tend to forget about the 20% because we need to work on 80% efficiency. So again, the law of the vital few states that 80% of our results, okay, so if we're playing to 100, 80 points come from 20% of our production. Whether you want to look at that as 20% of your players. Another way that you can look at it, and this can be a little tough to swallow or do sometimes, is sometimes we don't need to raise our whole team. You know, we always hear that, let's give 110%. Sometimes we don't need to raise the whole team. Sometimes the underperforming bottom half of our team just needs to stay where they're at, and we need to get a little bit more from our top performers. If I have a team of six or seven on the team and four of them are playing at a mediocre line, they're holding their own but nothing spectacular, instead of trying to get them to play out of their range and out of their focus and raise up, I want my top three players to produce more because they're used to playing in that range. They're used at playing at a high, higher level. Now, obviously, the idea is to raise everyone up. We're going to work with those four. I'm not saying we ignore them. I'm just saying too many times we try and raise the bottom up, and what we really need to do is take our top performers and ask more of them. That's why they're the top performers. 
if I'm in a company and we're struggling, our sales are down, I'm not going to expect my bottom salespeople to help save the company and raise it up. I'm going to turn to my top performers, my top salespeople, and ask them to take it up a notch. I'm going to focus on that 20%, the top 20. And at some point in our seasons as coaches, or even as teachers, we need to look at when we kind of make that switch in philosophy. So, you know, we have preseason and the first half of the season, we are trying to get everyone up to that bar. But at some point when your job is on the line or you need to win games, you're not going to be around much. Instead of looking at raising the bottom up, ask for consistency, still work with that bottom half. Again, we are not ignoring them. I know this is going to get clipped and people are going to focus on that little thing. We are not ignoring the bottom. We are still pushing them. We are still asking them to work. But I'm not going to depend the win or loss or the metrics on that bottom half. I'm going to focus on the higher percentage, my top tier producers to get us where we go. So start to think about how you do that in your space, whether it's in the gym, on the field, in the classroom. How do we do that? If you feel your team is playing at 80%, do you want to ask the bottom to get you that 20%? Or do you ask the select few at the top to give you a little more to get that? And that goes into a whole nother discussion of, you know, we don't need someone to go and get that 20% on their own. I need 1%, 2%, 5% better from my top producers to get us up to that 100%. It's going to take a little bit of thought on your side to make this work because we are so conditioned that when things aren't going wrong, when our teams aren't performing, we're not winning the games or the matches that we should. We look at the bottom and what's really wrong. We need to flip that and start to think about what do we do well and how can I get that even better? If I'm a great serving team and I'm serving at 85%, 87%, instead of looking at my servers who are serving 70%, 60% and getting them to help us get up that, I'm going to look at my top ones that are serving at the the 85% to 90 and how can I get them to 95%? Again, I'm still going to work and focus and help the bottom percentage of the team get better at their skills, but not at the cost of getting diminished returns from my top producers, taking time away from them, taking time away from the skills that we're good at. If we're a tremendous defensive team, but our offense is struggling, I'm still going to spend time and work on our offense. But I'm not going to forget about our defense. I'm still going to work probably even harder on our defense because that's what's going to get us where we need to go. I think... That can be a struggle, especially for young coaches. It's really easy to look at what your team is doing poorly and working on that because it stands out, right? Oh, gosh, we, we hit in the negative or our free throws are negative. You know, in the basketball world, if our three throw percentage is pretty poor, but we're the best team in three-point shooting, My game plan and my practice plan is going to work on three-point shooting to make it even better. Still spending time on free throws and trying to get that bar raised up, but a bulk of my focus is going to make what we already do even better. So think about that. Is that how you do it in your gym? Would you spend the time and the focus? Let's say you have an hour. Would you spend 40 minutes on three throws or would you spend 40 minutes 
on the three-point shooting. Again, I know that's hypothetical. You probably don't spend that much time on a single skill. But for trying to make this point, let's look at it that way. A lot of us would go, we are going to spend all that time on free throws. That's what we're bad at. But now we're no longer practicing and working on what we're really good at. At some point, we have to realize this is where we're at on certain skills and certain levels. And we need to get rid of that mindset of we need to maintain what we're good at. No, we need to increase what we're good at. It's okay to have those maintain at our lower skills and slowly progress them. But we need to really increase what we're really good. And trust me, it's been tough. I've, we've fallen into it at my staff. Every team, every program I've ever been at, we've struggled with this. We just want to come in and fix the things that we're very, very bad at. But again, time is limited, and we end up taking away time from working on the things that we're really good at. And then those skills and those things that used to bail us out no longer bail us out. Because it's not as good because we haven't done that skill. So there you go. This week's topic. Let's open up this discussion. Share this video. Like this video. Subscribe on the YouTube channel. That would mean a lot. But what would mean more is let's get some comments. Let's start the discussion. Let's open up and let's talk about this. Because I think this is a great topic that doesn't get enough attention. The 80-20, the vital fuel, fuel law. Focusing on what we do well over fixing what we don't do so well. Again, don't take this out of context. It doesn't mean that we don't work on the things that we're not good at. It just means we don't work on them at the expense of the things that we do well. All right, can't wait to see the comments and the discussion, and I'll see everyone next week for our next Focus Friday. Peace, love, don't suck. Make sure you check out soulperformancecounty.com, danmickle.com, at 717soul, across all social media for the Soul Performance Academy, and at Real Dan Mickle across all social media to reach me directly. Would love to hear from you, get your questions, your comments, your concerns, and seriously, share, like, rate, subscribe. Let's get the word out here and continue to grow our coaching and our teaching and our instruction profession and our group. And much love. Bye. Bye.